Hey friends, hi. Welcome back to my channel, Life is Tiff Knows It. I am Tiffany, or Tiff for short. I'm happy you're here today. I am gonna be continuing on my adventure with this diamond painting from Dye or DIY Moon Shop. It is entitled Doors of Moria by John Shannon. Um, it is a 65 by 50 centimeter diamond painting with round drills. And it is inspired um, from the movie Lord of the Rings. Yeah, so we're gonna get into it. Thank you for taking time to watch my channel. I um, feel like every time I make a whip and chat, I have to explain that I'm still sick. It's um, it's really starting to bum me out. I I feel like I've been sick on and off for the last uh, three weeks now. Um, I am not typically a person that gets sick that frequently, but I guess maybe I'm catching up from all the time I didn't get sick when um, all the, the, the panorama was going on. I didn't get sick hardly at all during that time. I think obviously people were keeping their distance, keep, people were wearing masks, um, I wasn't around a lot of people. So I guess in an odd way, this is my immune system being caught up with the times. <laughs> so I hope you're having a great day. Um, I am finishing off this little section here. I have a feeling I might get done with this section and I'll open up another section if that's the case. I am really enjoying working on this diamond painting. Um, I really am liking that I'm sectioning it off. This is the first diamond painting that I've sectioned off with washi tape. And I'm liking it. It works. So one of the things that I know is just going on, I can't get away from, and I don't really want to get away from it because it's really uh, interesting to me, is the Johnny Depp case. And I, at this point in time, because you might be watching this at a later date, yesterday was Amber Heard's first time testifying. And uh, I don't know. I think there are varying opinions now that we're hearing her side of the, the story, for sure. I felt, from what I saw, it seemed ingenuine and a little bit dramatic, what she was saying. But... I guess we'll have to see when I you know I never was like a huge Johnny Depp fan I think when I was younger um, a lot of my friends really loved Johnny Depp like just were obsessed with him and I just I wasn't and I think I was almost like rebellious against it because I'm like everyone likes Johnny Depp come on like Let's like someone else too, <coughs> was my thought. I'm sorry about the coughing. Um, I really liked this quirky actor, and I still really like him, named Steve Zahn. Um, yeah. I, as a teenager, I was kind of borderline obsessed with Steve Zahn. I just thought he's so funny and kind, and I like the roles he's in, and I shared that crush on him. My friend and I both had a crush on him and oh man, it was just a different world back then being a teenager watching Steve Zahn movies. If you haven't heard of him, he's in, um, oh man, I think probably one of the biggest films he's in is a film called Joyride. I don't know if that's big anymore, but it did have Paul... Paul Ryder? Was that his name? Oh my goodness. Names are hard for me this morning. <coughs> I hope it's Paul Ryder. Um, Steve Zahn is also in like National Security. He was in Daddy Daycare. A lot of not terribly fabulous films, but uh, I just liked him nonetheless. But Johnny Depp, now that I'm seeing him as a person in the... Um, trial he seems like a really genuine cool person like I I feel for him 
you know, when I think of Johnny Depp, my first experience, like, watching a film he was in is, um, What's Eating Gilbert Grape, which I don't know if anyone has ever seen that movie. It is an odd movie. It is an odd, sad movie. <laughs> From what I remember, there was, like, um, it was about this family, and Johnny Depp was the older brother, and Leonardo DiCaprio was the younger brother and it was such an odd role for Leonardo DiCaprio, DiCaprio. like he was playing like a mentally challenged teenager um and it was about a mom who spoiler alert dies um and is overweight and I think they end up burning down the house because they can't get her body out of the house. I could be completely remembering this wrong, but that's what my memory tells me about the odd movie of What's Eating Gilbert Grape. And that's totally what I think of when I think of Johnny Depp, because that's like the one movie that I have, it's, it's just ingrained in my mind. Um, I was one of those people though that when that movie came out, when Leonardo DiCaprio was pretty big, I was a preteen. Totally fit that cliche teenage girl who had a huge crush on Leonardo DiCaprio and loved Titanic. I don't know if there's anyone else around my age who can relate to just being a huge fan of Titanic, but it was so much a part of like who I became like it's so funny I remember when people asked me who did, or what did I want to do when I grew up or what what, what did I want to do when I grow up yeah um my answer would be not like being a singer it would be I want to be Celine Dion <laughs> I want to I want to be her because she's saying um my heart will go on in Titanic and I love that song and I loved um, Leonardo DiCaprio and then I went on to just absolutely love Celine Dion um, for quite a while like I would just pretend to just be her and sing her songs and that was a lot of my um, <laughs> career exploration was how do I how do I become a singer just like Celine Dion <laughs> so Anyway, it's just funny how my brain works. Like, one thing reminds me of another thing, and then reminds me of another thing. I'm sure a lot of people are that way. But it is, it's is—it's been pretty interesting um, watching this Johnny Depp trial and just seeing a person in a different light. And it's, it's like a humble reminder that, like, celebrities are just... They're people. They're humans. They make mistakes. Um, they have a lot of struggles. And some of it's caused, like, not caused by, but I, being in the spotlight would be stressful and not helpful in a lot of ways. So I guess Hollywood and that lifestyle of being an actor or an actress is not terribly glamorous at times. I guess it's also in the company that you keep, right? And the things that you you choose to do and I think being a celebrity probably opens up a lot of freedom and power or perceived freedom and power um, so anyway have you been following the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial it's yeah it kind of sucked me in what else is going on well <coughs> Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. <coughs> I was hoping my cough would go away. I actually sound so much better than I did the other day because I had completely lost my voice. And I've been really reflecting on things lately with like my health. And I'm curious if there's a correlation between like my weight specifically and diamond painting so I have 
always struggled with my weight. Like, not, like, I wouldn't say it's like an extreme health concern. It's more like I always bounce up and down in my weight. Like, usually by like about 15 pounds. Up and down, up and down. Sometimes even like 30. It's gone, it fluctuates within 30 pounds. But anyway, I've noticed that I am moving less recently. And I am also diamond painting more. Well, kind of. I want to think I'm diamond painting more. But it makes me want to be really intentional um, about <sighs> taking time to exercise to offset all of the time that I'm spending not moving as much. Um, if that makes any sense. Like, um, I just have not been able to motivate myself lately to have like a workout routine. Like I keep kind of hinting to it. I want to do it, but then I like end up sleeping in instead. So I'm looking for a reset because I want diamond painting to be a, a big part of my life. Like it is. And it, it's, it centers me and makes me feel good mentally. It relaxes me. It, I kind of like talked about it in my last whip and chat. It, it provides a um, predictability that I crave a lot of the time because I live in a lot of chaos with my type of job that I have. Like part of most of the job is reacting and responding to things that were not planned. <laughs> so I like to balance that with things that I, that just are relaxing and predictable, like, but I think too, I'm seeing that I'm not, um, physically moving as much. So I'm wondering, what do you do? Like, do you have like an exercise routine? Do you, do you take like stretch breaks? I can't get this diamond out or movement breaks, um, while diamond painting. I'd, l I'd love to hear it because I want to have like um, a more of a whole body balanced approach. And I think I'm doing like the pre-steps of really creating a, something that works long term for me to work out um, or just be mindful of movement and eating healthier. So that's one personal goal that I have. Um, y'all, I am so excited. May is like my favorite month. I love the month of May. The school year is winding down. Um, it's my, the month of my wedding anniversary. My husband and I will be celebrating our fifth wedding anniversary. And I believe, I want to say our 12th year of knowing each other and being in a relationship. So we were... Definitely a couple who were together quite a while before we got married. <laughs> um, and I don't know, May just, everything kind of seems to be changing at work, kids overall, or <laughs> they kind of feel more humbled because they know that change is coming. Like, and so... Yeah, I love the month of May. We this weekend we have a um a wedding we're attending, a friend's wedding, and that will be fun. Um Yeah, weddings I like attending weddings. I feel that when I was planning my wedding, it was so weird cuz it, I had not attended many weddings. I think we had attended, Bill and I had attended one wedding before our wedding. And so I really wish I would have been able to go to different weddings. Like I think we, even though we were dating for such a long time, we were one of the first people to get married in our friend group. Um, and I wouldn't say we were like super young. Like Bill was 
32? No, no, I, no, that's wrong. I was 28 and he was 30. So still not terribly young in my mind, but but every time I go to weddings, I'm like, oh, that would have been a really good idea. <laughs> but no, I loved our wedding. Um, there honestly wasn't, wouldn't be much I would change about Bill, like my wedding with Bill. Like just everything turned out really nice and and the school year's winding down. I um I am so excited for summer. I just I love that just time of year. I know some people is watching um Diamond and Washi's Whip It Chat and you know, I know a lot of people they don't like the warm weather. Like it's it's hard on them, it's exhausting. And I I sometimes feel that way too, but I I'm just ready, ready for a change. Like the weather right now is very gloomy here. It's um, it's been very rainy this this week, which I personally I do like rain. Um, but there continues to be this wind, and wind and rain are not the best combo. <laughs> but I just I'm so grateful. I'm grateful for the changing of the weather like sometimes just like that shift is helpful for me um and like some adulting things going on we are getting our sprinklers turned on like it really is truly feeling like spring slash like moving towards the summer season with sprinklers on and flowers growing you know typical spring spring springing around me. Spring has sprung, right? Oh, what else is going on? I feel like there would have been, oh, well, I, if you've watched any of my shorts, you will see one of them with a guinea pig drill burr, and I did bring drill burr to a whip and chat with me a couple weeks ago. And, you know, it's hard being a pet owner when, um, you have older pets. Like, I, I, it's so worth it being a pet owner, but having older pets, it gets a little bit hard to navigate. And I always kind of feel, um, I hate six two. Let me see here. <coughs> so Sorry. Um, weird talking about guinea pigs because I know some people just, guinea pigs aren't their thing and that's totally okay. But I am a big believer that regardless of the type of pet that you have, it, it shouldn't matter what type of pet you have. Like the love that you have for that pet is there and that connection. And I don't think for me, the fact that a guinea pig is a rodent and has a, a shorter life. Um, expectancy it, that doesn't negate how much I love and care about my guinea pigs and it just it kind of makes it harder because you have less time with them so um, I mentioned this before but drill burr is the oldest guinea pig I have ever owned like I've always had guinea pigs pass away when they're five or six Drover seven and the life expectancy of a guinea pig is like four to eight years which is a huge span like but so like I've just been grateful that he's been with us this long and I have I've had experiences where I have I've ha like had to take intensive care of a guinea pig who's we're trying to figure out what's wrong like a younger guinea pig and despite all of like all of the stress and the work and the um time that went into caring for this guinea pig that was younger it I had a guinea pig like die and then when I went to the vet 
like we took him to the vet we were like it was like an emergency like can is there anything you can do like oh, we don't know what's wrong like it was obvious like it was actively dying and the vet said well you you might have just stressed him out by coming to the vet and like I felt like even if that was true that was like not terribly like a helpful thing to say because I was trying so hard to like um do what was best for him and so I've that was like a while ago that was at this point three years ago and that was like a really traumatic experience like I think pet death can be super dramatic or traumatic and dramatic so I've kind of tried to have this like different view of like you know when it's when it's an animal's time to go or a person's time to go it it's that's just what it is and so like, I've tried to have this attitude of, like, yes, I'm there, and I care, and I want to do everything I can to make my pet be not in pain and be there for them and, like, live a good life. But I think this time around, I want to try less. I want the intention to be to keep the pet comfortable and not keep the pet alive because I don't want it to die. I want to keep the pet comfortable and I want to be more accepting that if it's his time, it's his time. Like not trying so hard to um, force a pet to, you know, put it through a traumatic event to keep it alive. So <coughs> that's kind of been my attitude. Like I'm here to keep him comfortable and We've noticed, like, a decline in, like, eating and stuff like that. And part of me is like, well, should we take him to the vet? Because he's just so old. And that can be really hard for guinea pigs to, like, pack him up and go into the vet. But I'm so thankful I did. Because what they found out was, like, he's not eat He hasn't been eating because he has a cyst. And he also like broke off a tooth which I cannot believe I didn't notice but then a whole tooth is missing like guinea pigs have two front two teeth on top and two teeth on bottom and like he's missed a huge tooth which has impacted his ability to eat um and so I'm so glad I brought him in because those are things that can be fixed like they mentioned a surgery which yes that's a term that's a big deal but they didn't feel that this surgery was, like, they didn't mention anything about it being, like, life-threatening or anything like that. Um, and that it it's a relatively easy procedure, like, a, you know, and he'll be okay. And so, oh my gosh, like, I'm so thankful I decided to put, take him in because I just wouldn't have, I would have just thought that he's just old and he, it's his time and it's not his, I don't think it's his time. I think these are things that we can, that the vet can easily fix. So anyway, that, I'm sorry if that was kind of a downer, um, talking about like pet death, but I think it's just such good news that there's something that they can do. And so I'll be taking my guinea pig in for a surgery next Monday um which you know who knows you know I and I'm okay if if it's his time and the surgery doesn't go well then it's his time but I feel good at least doing something about it and being there for him so that's my update with drill burr in the meantime we've been doing like a lot of syringe feeding and just a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with him and crafting with him he tried to he's so funny he like he's not eating much food but he definitely is interested in chewing yarns I'm like no can't do that buddy while I'm knitting um yeah so those are kind of the big things coming up for me uh, I do have a quote that I thought would be a good one for today let me see. I always like do this in advance and then I like to turn to it. 
38. No cape required is the one that I'm thinking of today. By the way, if you're new to my whip and chats, I like to just read a quote from this state positive book. Helps recenter me and hopefully kind of gives you a good start to your, your day or whatever you're doing. So it says, you don't need a special suit, a title, or a superhero name. You just need to tap into the love, spirit, passion, soul, and purpose inside you to create your life and better and a better world today. And I, lo I love that. Like, we have the power to do that. We can, by the things we say, the things we do. Um, and I think that's just a, a great reminder that we could be our own superheroes. We don't have to have a certain external thing for that. So I think at this point, I'm almost on this section. This might be a good time to end this whip and chat. It's a little bit shorter length this week. Um, but yeah, hopefully you're doing well. Thank you so much. Watching these videos means the world to me. And um, please consider subscribing if you haven't already. That really helps my channel. That really helps me um, give me a direction to go with these videos. And I just get so excited when I see that I have new subscribers. So thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. And I'll see you next week for next week's Whip and Chat. See you later. Bye.